Hi and welcome to my podcast. My name is Ali Hart and you are listening to Build a Creative Business in a Noisy World. But for the next while, we are delving deeper into something that I'm really passionate about and that is learning how to love ourselves from our brain to our very bones. Um, I have different experts joining me from the wellbeing industry and I really hope you can join me on this journey as we dig a little deeper uh, to learn about ourselves but also just to realise that life is to be lived and how can we reach that capacity by doing internal work, external work and all of the above. I really hope you enjoy the episode. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode in From the Inside Out. It is great to have you and I'm really looking forward to today. We have Kirsty Elwood who is a holistic therapist but specializes as well in reflexology. So I am so intrigued. One of the things that she says um, on her profile or maybe it's in the website I saw it is um, really she can dig into seeing the stories the body has to tell or something along those lines. I'm sure I've got it wrong, but I thought that was just a beautiful summary of everything that this whole ep- this whole uh, series encompasses, which is just working on the end. Like our, everything is so connected. So it's great to have you today, Kirsty. <laughs> I just love this. So I could talk about this all day, so you need to you need to just keep your eye on the clock. <laughs> well, the good thing is it'll cut us off now because we had to change because I have different laptops. Um, so we have forty minutes to get really deep into this, and um, so it is lovely to have you. Do you want to uh, to extend on what I've said and give a little bit more of your own intro? What you'd like people to know? Oh my goodness. Um... So, yeah, I I am a holistic therapist. I fell into it, but yet at the same time, uh, it wasn't planned. So I was studying media studies and loving it, loving the story. And I knew that I wanted to get into something that would allow me to document maybe stories. Mm -hmm. So that was the passion. And then we had a really dark, we called it our black year. Mm-hmm. Where just our wee world went topsy-turvy. So a lot changed in that time. And I began to just lose my excitement for, mm-hmm. for everything that I was doing at that time. And I had a reflexology treatment that I wasn't supposed to get. It was supposed to be for somebody else, my my mum, and she couldn't make it, and she just shoved me. And, okay. she go. and I remember walking in, and I spotted, and I know this is going to sound really cheesy, but I spotted a crystal, um, and it was a rose quartz crystal. And I love rose quartz every time I ever was struggling and with my confidence or with my yeah my confidence I think that Mm -hmm. would be a a self-belief in my confidence I would find a a gem which then I later discovered was rose quartz so I I walked into this appointment and I saw this massive rose quartz and I thought oh yes I'm meant to be here today I started to work on my feet and I thought it was the funniest thing Mm -hmm. I had ever had and once I got over the bizarre feeling of it, um, just in a sense that somebody was touching my feet. Yeah. That wasn't a family member. So I was like, this is bizarre. I loved it. And I knew right there and then I had to be, I, I had to get as much knowledge about it as I could. Okay. So that kind of, that was it. That was me then going off and studying reflexology for a year. Um, as well as studying in my fifth year of media. So that was the only, okay. I was only allowed to do it if I could do both at once. Um, and and then I stupidly, well, I'll say stupidly, but it was all good because it was all growth. So mm-hmm. stupidly, stupidly looking back, mm-hmm. um, I then set up in business right away as a reflexologist. Um, looking back, it was a great learning curve. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I would maybe say to people, no, do you know what? Actually, just, yeah, go for it because you're going to learn. So you go for it. So it's not stupid at all. Um, so then I gradually started learning um, more therapies. I didn't touch anything for three years and I just got okay. some sexology to understand it. And then I gradually started doing other things. So 
my passion is reflexology, mm -hmm. but my passion, oh my goodness, is the story, the story of a person, because we are more than bones and tissue and organs, mm -hmm. so much more. Um, and when you start to observe the body through the feet and through touch, oh my goodness, you get such a wealth of information. So for mm -hmm. me, it's just quite helping people connect the dots in their own healing journey. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. And so tell me then a little bit about the media then. Were you, so you were determined just to finish it because you were in that or were you like, look, I may as well try and combine. I don't know. What, what, what was that like? I think in that time, it was for something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. If it didn't, if it didn't work out because I, it's not really something I, that people would know me now for, but I, in that time, whenever I was doing it, I was, I had won awards for, for what I had done. I had been, films of mine had, had, had traveled around on, um, uh, like, um, oh, like um, we film circuits, I can't mm -hmm. even festivals. Festivals, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tours, I was thinking there, yes. We tours and things like that, and I won awards for it, and I won incredible opportunities for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and because I was always incredibly shy, film was the thing that if I came home from school and I had had a bad day, my mum would put on like an old MGM musical of Gene mm -hmm. Kelly or Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And that would be me. I would be lost. I just loved that whole world. So it just made sense to go into that world. Mm -hmm. um, and yet I remember thinking at the time, how am I going to do this? Because I can't go in and command a room mm -hmm. and I loved opportunities where I was working just on little corporate videos as a floor manager and I, I loved the little headset I thought that was just mm -hmm. joy um but I is that if somebody was telling me what to do so Christy get that person's smile I'd be like mm -hmm. and I loved that but I don't know if I could ever have sat and commanded um, mm -hmm. around, I think, um, yeah, it, it just naturally took a turn, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yet, even now, I, I just get lost in all the beautiful things. So I get lost in the music and I get lost in the film and I get lost in the artwork. Mm -hmm. I get lost in that and that's good. That's really good therapy. Um, so, yeah, it's funny. It all took a turn. And do you think there is, or I feel like this is a safe space for me to be uh, able to yeah, say this, is there, is there a connection, do you think, with storytelling and then you're like, looking into people's individual stories and film and um, a real openness to that? Do you see a connection there like I do? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because whenever you're feeling, it makes sense that that goes into your limbs mm -hmm. and it goes into your your movement whether it's artwork or dancing or talking it just flows doesn't it and mm -hmm. energy will flow and it will find its way out to mm -hmm. help you communicate and process maybe at times whenever we find that difficult to do so yeah and I think just the way that you would look at artwork and you can get a vibe of I wonder what that person was feeling in that day whenever they did that. Yeah. So for me, it just flows. The stories are always there. Yeah. And so tell me if someone was to book them with you and obviously you're, you focus on reflexology strongly, but there are other therapies there. And even on your social media, it's um, this lovely, inviting feeling of um person-centered it feels like with you uh, what what would people so if they were to say you know what are the other therapies or what way does it what what would you say would be an average booking for you week to week do you know I think the the most common one actually at the moment is reflexology or foot reading foot um, reading yes reading oh uh, so good um but really I always bring it back to the consultation. Okay. And 
what a person is looking for and what they need. So say we were doing a massage and I thought, mm-hmm. gosh, I know Ali's just not relaxing and I can maybe feel that. I might say, you know, would you be open to the idea of us maybe changing it? I mean, maybe work through your feet instead of through your back or mm-hmm. maybe I'll be working with a client and they come in and they're feeling really tight and they're maybe processing a lot that particular day. Maybe it's been a really hard week and I'll touch their feet and I'll just know, do you know what? We could sit and we could touch your feet for an hour. That's great. And it will be wonderful. Or we could maybe try to address the shock or the grief or Mm -hmm. the other things that they're feeling. And then there'll be times where maybe we'll do a bit of recce instead. Okay. So for me, it's just... I'm very, very open to a client changing their appointments. Well, yeah, person centers, I was saying there. So, what is recce then? Just someone who's totally new to recce is something that sounds really weird. Uh-huh. Um, and if you saw somebody doing it and you didn't know what it was, you would maybe look at it and think, what are they doing? And I know that there would be certain connotations with it as well, where you would say it's healing or it's the laying on of hands or it's all of those things. For me, it's even more simplistic than that. It's, do you know, whenever you fell as a child and Mm -hmm. your mum would come over and she would instinctively just put her hand on that area to make you feel better. And you just know that whenever you got mum's touch or dad's touch or whoever was doing it, you knew that they were trying to help you feel better and that they were trying to help you calm. Mm -hmm. That's recce. So whenever you're lying in bed and you put your hand on your lovely husband's back and he, he might go oh that feels lovely and hot mm-hmm. and you're like oh I can feel that's lovely and hot as well that's recce that's as simple as what it is and it's just the idea that when a person is feeling depleted or drained mm-hmm. or maybe going through a lot maybe there's a lot mentally that they're just trying to figure out and process Mm -hmm. um or maybe we're just trying to find our fitting again and whenever you would put your hand on somebody even if you're sitting on the bus and you put your hand on their knee sometimes that person might feel heat or they might feel cold or they might feel tingles in other parts of their body that's recce so do you ever remember whenever we were children seeing the ready break advert and you saw the little ready break boy uh-huh and it was a little animation and he I think I loved him so much because he looked like is it morph yeah he was the wee yeah odd looking yeah yeah and um, um, it's walking I can imagine him walking uh-huh. and he had that wee glow about him and that would be you and your energy field, we all have this lovely little glow about us. Just like if I walked into your space and you were having a day where maybe you felt a bit prickly mm-hmm. or maybe I was feeling a bit prickly, you would meet me and just go, oh, you look lovely, but huh, something just feels a wee bit off. And that's just energy. We all have it. Mm-hmm. And Reiki is just addressing that side of ourselves that is that lovely energy field. Oh. So sometimes it can never... A block but sometimes we just need a wee bit more to help us um and to be honest with you with recce the way that I would perceive and do recce it's not a feeling of having to put your hands somewhere on someone's body to to see if we can help I call them a little wheels little energy centers or chakras people might call them um You can put them on those specific areas. Or for me, if you were sitting and we were sitting in a pub or we were trying to be really discreet, I could just sit and put my hand on your knee and your body will then take that energy to where it needs it to go. Mm -hmm. So with Reiki or massage, I can determine how much energy I want to use or how much pressure or or, um, how light I want to make it. I know that I can work you for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. With Reiki, your body does it. So your body pulls it in and your body will okay. take it to go. And it might take it to the pain or it might take it to the grief or it might take it to something you're mentally trying to process. Um, um, but the lovely thing about it is when you do it 
that person will just look so calm afterwards. And that's what we're trying to achieve, a lovely feeling of comfort and like a big hug. Mm -hmm. And that's whenever your body is just pulling in what it, what it needs. And for me, it's just using that energy that would be either the universal energy or the God force energy. It's whatever people are comfortable using. Um, but yeah, it's a therapy that sounds weird, but to do, it's really lovely. Yeah. Great. And so what type of person do you think? Because I always talk about we attract our own tribe. OK, and I love that what I'm hopefully doing is breaking down barriers. It's like I was joking earlier in my life that, you know, I'm normalizing heart defects with my Absolutely. heart monitor on at the minute. But it's I'm just so enjoying speaking and and peak, putting therapy out there as a uh, as a as a norm. So, what what type of people do you feel? I'm sure people come to you who don't want anyone to maybe to know that like this is what I need, and this is where I need, it. or they're you know because I, I love the woo woo, you know. So, just someone like <laughs> me who is like just give me it all, give me the crystals, give me everything. Or do you find there's a mixture, or what what would the clients be like? Because obviously you're so welcoming and so um, open and person centered that I can see that I imagine you could work with anybody. But is there a certain type at the minute, or what do you find? Um, it's funny because at the moment I'm finding that a lot of my clients you tend to get a run of particular things, and I I used to discover or used to find that that was because maybe it was something I needed to learn more about, mm -hmm. and you would get a client after client that maybe had issues with their bile, or you had client after client that had issues with their heart or issue with their the structure of their body. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I. It just seems to be um, client after client that is awakening to um, feeling that they're in a space to deal with um, abuse that they dealt with in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so that seems to be a run at the moment where I'm gaining so much more of an understanding as to how that is um, being observed through their body. Mm -hmm. but in all honesty everybody um and I love I love a skeptic I love a skeptic because mm -hmm. it's so cool um and really there'll be people who will turn up and they'll say Kirsty, I have no idea why I'm here today but mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm like great that's good mm -hmm. um but everybody provided you are here and you're living and breathing and if you are open to the idea or not open to the idea yeah give it a go I think for me it's about finding your person Brilliant. and I know for me during oh over over the years I, I gravitate towards the person that maybe I need at that time mm -hmm. um, and yeah there's no limitation there because what you then discover which is great about my job and something I just love is that nobody is perfect mm -hmm. there is no such thing as perfect we are all human we are all learning we are all on a journey times can be more perfect than others mm -hmm. but we are all here to learn and what you start to discover is that no matter if you have a client who is female or has children or is a stay-at-home mom or is a female who is out there really pushing barriers and knocking down walls in terms of their business or someone with a really amazing income or someone who's living from day to day, week to week. It, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Nobody is immune to life mm -hmm. and the journey and learning more about themselves. And yes, I have clients who have been with me for years and then I have clients who would be more in the public eye who who we will never I guess uh, we would never talk about and say oh I have so-and-so as a client and it's not amazing it's just we don't talk about it unless that person mm -hmm. does and mm -hmm. um, so everybody what you soon discover is that everybody regardless of their job regardless of their income is going through something 
Yeah, and everyone has a story, don't we? We all have a story. And I think the people, when I approach people to, to be on the podcast, they're like, me? What? Me? But I just, I just, I love people. I've always loved stories. And I love to know how people deal with the ups and the downs. Because as you say, the um, even just last week, it was last week I was thinking, life is real. It was just before um, my previous PA passed away. And I was just literally thinking the night before, this is good, you know, this is really good. I've got the studio, the lads are settled in school, you know, Michael and I are communicating, this is good. And I, I mean, within an hour's window, uh, I had like a, a letter from someone about, it just, it totally threw me. And I was like, well, there goes that. But it's trying to lean into that and know that I was never untouchable, you know, and it was just, it was good that I recognized the happiness. And then I sort of sat in the, sadness and then whenever Gemma passed away I just feel like I've um you very kindly said before we came on about you know maybe leaving the the recording but I was just so I feel like I wanted to be here um with you and with someone who understands you know the grief journey do, do you have anything you want to say about that because I know that a, a family member of mine has um been to you before and we were discussing about the reflexology and um it was great for us to acknowledge how this family member was really open to it. Whereas I don't think you would necessarily know that on a day to day basis. So um, even just tying in life and grief and journeys do you, and, and reflexology, can you oh. uh, open up on that? Yeah, I, I think. What From is- knowing it, because you can pick things out. Sorry to interrupt you, but the cool thing is, that you actually can like the fate and I just I'm so ignorant to it all but I'm so fascinated you oh, know you're able you're able to, to tie in emotion and, and and journeys yes totally because I think what I love about it is that as a reflexologist and in our profession we cannot claim to cure heal diagnose mm-hmm. and prescribe anything so people know that quite quickly so what we do start to look at is the bigger picture and and what else could be going on so in that way it's that holistic approach to what else is impacting that person on a Mm day-to-day level and you might come in and people might perceive somebody as it's funny okay I can use a good example the top of our feet would be what we are happy for the outside world to see mm-hmm. and assume about us. So I could maybe take a glance at your foot and think, oh, okay, so maybe she's more rational and more methodical and more um, information-based. And then when we look at the underside of your foot, maybe you're a lot more open than what I assumed you to be. So we're always dealing mm-hmm. with that assumption. And I think that would be the same with everybody. I would have clients that come in and people, they would they would say, don't tell anybody that I'm here or people would never know that I would get this done because once you look past maybe what they perceive as to maybe even thinking that they would not be at all open to it, mm-hmm. underneath it all, they're very, very open. Um, so it's funny or even funny, the people that you'll have there and you might and might just inadvertently talk about, oh, look at your toes. Oh, you're rational and you're methodical and oh, you must love information. And they'll go, huh, tell me, tell me what else you maybe say. But I mean, I don't care about like mm-hmm. what else you maybe see. <laughs> you're like, oh, I love that. So that's really interesting. But yeah, you can very, very quickly... Um, almost get to the point. Um, I remember clients uh, through the years have said, wow, you've talked, you've talked to me more in that human level more quickly than what I have maybe reached from like three years of being in therapy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is looking at the, the body, looking at maybe why they think they're there and maybe what issue they think they they have what's going on so it could be um something um to do with their bowel and maybe they have reached a stage where they're just so frustrated about it and just want to now support their system a little bit better Mm -hmm. and 
maybe we'll look at the soul of the foot and we'll go, okay, you're a person who thrives on um, being organized and knowing where they need to be, what they need to do. They have a standard um, that they would address every day with. And maybe what you'll start to see is that person has maybe had the control taken away from them. So maybe there has been the likes of a, a bereavement or a loss mm-hmm. or the anniversary of a bereavement or a loss, or there's been a drastic change in their work environment that they're going into. And all of a sudden, they feel like Aladdin's carpet has just been pulled out from underneath their feet. And that stability of what we thrive upon yes to change so that is something that when you can start to see that through the feet we can get to that point quite quickly Mm -hmm. instead of and I think that's important because sometimes we just need someone else to get it without us having to say it Mm -hmm. when a stranger can look at your feet and go oh look at you you look lovely and then we look at the underside of your foot and go okay something's going on and we can maybe address that it makes that person feel a lot more safer to turn around and go yeah yeah things are just crap at the minute and I'm dealing with it yeah I know I'm emotional listening to you um yeah yeah I think it's do people carry grief in their feet is that really the yeah okay they carry grief in their feet, they carry it in their body, they carry it in their face. Mm-hmm. So if I may be talking with somebody, and it's not every time, but there can be little indicators that kind of start to like a like a PowerPoint that starts to kind of point the direction we want to go in. So I maybe would have a client in who maybe say for example, um, would have issues with their sinuses. Mm-hmm or issues with their breath, we can start to look at that and go, okay, what's this person holding on to? And it could be sinuses, either in the face, we hold a lot of grief in our face, Mm -hmm. um, in our sinuses, in the pockets of where we are trying to process information and we're trying to breathe in our world around us. So we're trying to decide what are we open to accepting or rejecting? So sometimes we can breathe things in fully and easily. Sometimes we try to prevent that from coming in. Mm -hmm. So maybe we start to take that breath of a, just getting through the, that day and just Mm -hmm. taking a big breath. So it it tends to then change. So we then start to go into the lungs. So whenever you start to observe the feet, yes, you might come in on a particular day And you might have more areas that feel a bit more tender or a bit sore. And we can look at that and go, okay, what's going on? But it doesn't necessarily have to be an issue in terms of, okay, so just because this person's lung feels the way that it does, doesn't necessarily mean that you have a lung problem. Mm -hmm. It could be coming down to what is she processing or what is he trying to work his way through? Um, And in that, once you start to try to connect the dots a little bit, Mm -hmm. and then you can look at that personality that a person has, and you can tell that through the feet as well. So someone come in, and I might perceive them to be a certain way. And then we'll look at the feet and we'll go, wow, this person is so different to maybe what I thought that they would be like. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a person, you can then see if they are more, and this is going to sound more of woo-woo, um, and <laughs> um, they might be more air or they might be more fire or they might mm-hmm. be more water or they might be more earth so just say you came into me and you were more earth and that would just mean that the bottom of your foot your heel is more dominant than the other areas mm-hmm. so I would know quite quickly that okay this person needs to feel safe they need to have a sense of security around them and whenever there's been maybe a lot going on like lockdown where we have suddenly rocked your boat Mm -hmm. things then feel a wee bit different and your fit 
may look a bit more discolored in that area or they it may look like it's going through a color change or maybe if you're somebody who's more emotional that you deal with things on that very emotional level you might look like your foot is full of waves and you can literally see the waves coming out at you so we will go okay that Ali is dealing with something where she's trying to really process things on that emotional level. And we can maybe see that you're somebody who has a very large water area, but a very closed water area. So maybe you're somebody who is incredibly emotional, but doesn't really like to talk about it or doesn't really like to offload onto anybody Mm -hmm. else, anybody else, because instead of being this vast ocean, you are a man-made lake so you are pushed into the smaller area with more land around you but we don't know by observing you how deep that water is or maybe how murky it is or how clean it is or how um sustaining it is from maybe the earth below it so it all sounds very weird but we can quickly look at that and we can go okay, I can see that she's going through a very emotional time and I can see that her earth, she needs more support. But Mm -hmm. I can also see that she's not asking for support and that she just on bottom line does not want to worry anybody. She just doesn't want to inconvenience anybody. So that flow just isn't quite flowing. So it's just that gentle reminder to go to that particular person and go, do you know, it's okay for you to talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. And maybe that person is dealing with this very fine line that happens in that water level between worth and worthlessness. Mm -hmm. And you will either be in one or the other. And sometimes we need to, whenever you know that you're more emotionally led, we maybe need to say to you, okay, today, see for a week or see for a day, be in that place where everything doesn't feel good. And mm. embrace that. And then maybe in a few days, whenever you feel stronger, we need to actively get you to try to push <laughs> that barometer into the worthy zone again, where you are feeling things on that different level. Mm. And a lot of the times we get stuck between those two levels. And the amount of people that are living in that zone where they just feel worthless all the time they're functioning like Mm -hmm. every other human being out there and you would not know what to look at them but Mm -hmm. underneath it all they just don't feel very good about themselves so it's just trying to encourage them to push that um or trying to encourage the person who can't communicate when you see that their the pads of their toes are really swollen i want to maybe force force (laughs) encourage them into artwork or dancing or movement where you can maybe explore and encourage things to flow on another level yeah wow it's it's so powerful so powerful um there's so many things have come up for me there one of the things I was thinking which um adds a bit of lightness to it is I really don't like feet okay (laughs) So, and then I'm thinking, is it like the dentist? I learned to control when I got braces, I learned to cope with the dentist. So just as you're talking, I'm like, is this the universe telling me that I have got to get over my fear of feet and I don't like anybody touching my feet. So then I think maybe, am I just a really damaged person who needs, I need reflexology. So that's the reason why I want to come to you, but, um, and I all like feet. I could tell you feet that I've seen when I was eighteen, and I, I still can't get out of my head. You know that turned yeah. many people's feet. So, is there? Um, I know it adds a bit of lightness to it, but is there any part of the job where you're just like, I can't deal with this. This bit is too much. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have never really minded feet. Mm-hmm. In some that, if you were my husband and you started to put your toe near my face, I'd be like, Get off! Oh wait, yeah. I love them, but I don't. I don't love them and so there's there's times when <laughs> also trained in um oh um pedicures and manicures and things like that and it's stuff I wanted to explore to just understand more mm-hmm. um, and I, I don't really tend to do it now but 
I have to be honest with you, fate, I look at fate. If you were to say to me, Kirsty, I hate my feet and I need to get a pedicure or something before I can come and see you, I'd be like, no, just let me. I'm already me. thinking that. No, we don't need because everything's. Yeah, there. you look at it differently, don't you? I guess it's like not necessarily like a canvas, but you it's it's your. Totally. You're looking yeah. at it differently. Absolutely. It, it's a story. And yeah, like a canvas, we put splodges in different places. And it's a very, um, for that person, they're a blank canvas. And mm-hmm. I think it's about bringing the colour in and showing them that maybe the areas that they thought were dark can actually be quite light. Mm-hmm. So it's it would be doing that. Um, the other thing for me would be feet. Um, there have been certain times when I have maybe looked at feet and just thought, um, and it's been twice. I could say hands, and that's what, in 19 years, it's just been twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but purely only because I went to a lady's house um, and they were, I had lots of cats. So by the time it took me to clean her feet, it um, the time was probably over just because the, they were, yeah so <laughs> that was a time where you think huh but most of the time Kirsty, you're just thinking I love my job I'm good at my <laughs> job I'm here. I'm here just commit to it <laughs> but I just yeah I to sit and remove someone's hard skin I wouldn't be so into that yeah but, although again yeah. I know people who love that and one of the girls who comes as she's a student of mine and she adores her job. And I just think, well, everybody, the world needs everybody. Like the world, mm-hmm. everybody is in their different roles. Well, I'm worried we're going to get um, told with time because of this different laptop. But I'm loving this chat. Um, <laughs> other things that I was thinking about when you were talking were, um, so uh, grief obviously can come in loss of a person um, or our loved one. But you're talking there about COVID as well. Yeah. How did how did your business how, how was it for you during COVID and then now post COVID what what are the what are the what changes have you as a business and as a reflexologist and as a holistic therapist gone through? I'll be honest with you, it it was a period of growth for me, <laughs> um, because it pushed me out of my comfort zone, uh, which I I hated at that mm-hmm. time, um. But looking back, it couldn't have been any better. So it encouraged me more to do foot readings. Um, And it sounds like it's something that's psychic and it's really not because I cannot look at your feet and tell you that you're going to meet a tall, dark and handsome man and you're going to go and live in Ibiza. That (laughs) will not happen. (laughs) Isn't the world so annoying that they've made it into this, that they've projected that? um, And it's so not that... Um, but for me, it pushed me out of my comfort zone. And then I then went and self-employed. So I was self-employed for a long time. And then after I had my girls, I think I, I lost a wee bit of confidence. So it was better for me to be in a place where I was just receiving, you know, mm-hmm. my, my appointments and my income and it was set. And then I realized that that wasn't for me anymore. And it really pushed me to try to look at things differently. But then in that past, the growth in this past year where I I managed to get uh, an article in written about me in a magazine, Mm -hmm. which was nationwide. And that was a massive shock to one day just wishing for it. And then the next day it's there. Um, And that was a big shock. And that brought a lot more awareness to me Uh and the potential of people looking at themselves in a very different way. So with that, then I was able to branch into a certain type of client, which sounds bad because I would say, I guess the easiest way to say it would be like a celebrity client Mm -hmm. in that industry, but really it's just a client who works in that industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the beauty about it is, is that they can be in, in the UK and America and we can still work with each other. So that's mm-hmm. really great. Um, and I think post-COVID, 
it's just been seeing the transitions that everybody's been going through. Yeah. Nobody has been immune. Nobody mm-hmm. has, has not felt it. Um, and now I had a feet that all looked very similar because we were, we were all going through a big shift. Wow. Um, but I think for people, it's just encouraging them to find their comfort zone again. And a lot of people are waking up to thinking, do you know what? I don't want to work here anymore Mm -hmm. because maybe I don't feel valued. I I want to step away from that and go somewhere else. So we've started to really, started to really see that people are really awakening up to what's actually right for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just for people who I think we're so, I've talked about this basically in every interview so far, we're so product led and we like to see results or people don't always understand that it's a journey rather than um, the destination. What is a sign of things working for you when people, and how often would people, how many sessions or what way would you encourage people to come? To be honest with you, it's, it's really down to that person and it's really down to what they're going through how much support they feel they need and what other support they systems they maybe have in place. Okay. So if you were coming to me and maybe you were feeling that you maybe needed more of a support network around you, then I'd be saying, put that in place. Mm-hmm. You know, see the counsellor, see see um, the doctor, see all of the things that you need. Um, and then we're there as the cheerleaders to just encourage and keep that mm-hmm. support going encouraging your body to relax and somebody may be processing processing that very differently to somebody else and that's the beauty of us all being so wonderfully unique and so beautifully different Mm -hmm. our Mm -hmm. fingerprints are different um we all go to the toilet there's just that there's just that level of just there being no shame and that we all have this process of we cut and we can bleed and Mm -hmm. we all Mm -hmm. go to the toilet and everybody can have explosive diarrhea and it's just that wonderful element of we are all human so it's just somebody might process things quicker than somebody else somebody might need more time and somebody might wake up and go, do you know what? I don't need reflexology. I think I'm just going to go do do this instead. And I'm like, yeah. yay. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the beauty of life. We're all it is. Uh, that's so funny that you should say about going to the bathroom. Because whenever I remember whenever my friend and I were teenagers, and we always ate melon together every summer. We, was, we called it the summer. We lived in the countryside. And you would go to the fruit and veg shop and get melon. And that was us. We're on our bikes and we had melon. Anyway, we were watching Wimbledon and there was someone famous in the audience. And I remember us having that conversation. We're like, but they're just people. They're just people. And actually, this, she's still one of my very good friends um, who I was sitting with. And we still have conversations. Just the other night, we were talking about life. And um, she's turning 41 next month. And I'll be 38 coming. And you just, I don't know. I, it's it's good to have those people and mm-hmm. even if it's someone close to you as you say but also someone like a reflexologist that you can share those weird and wonderful thoughts with and mm-hmm. but I just love the idea and I think that's why I should probably do when I come to you and then do another uh, episode <laughs> after this I'll be able to actually talk to you about about my experience because it's feet are quite vulnerable aren't they you know it's quite a mm-hmm. You're vul- when your socks are off and your shoes are off, you're you're vulnerable. There's that, that's why they go over hot coals and stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's it because some people may want their feet touched. Some people come into me and they say to me, Kirsty, I know that I want to be here and I know that I need to be here. Mm-hmm. I don't really want you to touch my feet. And you'll go, okay, what is it that you maybe don't like? Mm-hmm. And we can explore that and then we can just go gently. And there's a client that we're going really gently with at the minute. And she's coming into treatment number five, I think, just every month. And now we can maybe go a wee bit more compared to mm-hmm. where we were in the beginning. So it's just the biggest thing is, do you feel safe? Can we create an environment for you that you feel safe in, that you feel that you can for an hour allow yourself not necessarily to close your eyes if you don't want to but allow yourself to just breathe and deal with the unexpected that might happen in that hour Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's that that we can just do in a very slow process Um, other people think nothing of just coming in and going you know what I do just want to take off my trousers and just put a blanket over me and just feel really free other people 
just want to take off their socks or yeah. only just about to take off their socks. So it's just each to their own. Each to their own. Um, um, tell me a little bit about crystals then too, because I had my first experience with crystals and I went mm-hmm. to the shop for the first time ever. I actually noticed they had a, a big line outside the other day as well. So it's, you know, popular. But I went with Lee Telford, who is my well-being pal. So mm-hmm. I'd interviewed her before. It was a great podcast, but we would also be in touch quite often. So we were having coffee in the new studio and she said, Would you want, would you get some crystals? And we could put in uh, quartz as new quartz was it? I think it was quartz. Uh, so we put them well she said like I'll leave you to it and you can do it. so and I thought about my dad and we put the energy pointing out the ways in four corners of the studio and I'm just waiting for one of the many workmen to like chuck it out the window yes. because I tried to put them do you want to tell us anything about that before we finish up I think for me it would all just be again coming down to energy and I yeah. you know, drawn to certain things at certain times I have always Oh, I've always loved going into the into the shop with the pretty, with the wee pretty things, with the pretty crystals, and love their colours. And it's a bit like colour therapy. A lot of the time, we are drawn. Like we owned a shop in Donaghadee. It was called Seaside Ceramics, okay. where people would come in and paint pottery. And we loved that people would come in, and maybe a parent would come in and go, "I have a child with ADHD. I will be amazed if they sit for five minutes." But that child would sit engrossed. And just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or people would come over and go, oh, I, I hit, I, I hit the color of used, but I really wanted to use it. And you're going, well, that's for a different reason or a certain mm-hmm. reason. And I remember crystals are very like that. Music is very like that. And color is very like that. We will be drawn to certain things at certain times. And I remember a lady coming over and she was head to toe in baby blue. I was like, you look beautiful. And she said, really? I I hate this. And I'm like, really? Because she had the blue mm-hmm. scarf, mm-hmm. part of the uh, powder suit. And she said, I, I, I hate this. And I said, oh, okay. Out of curiosity, um, have you had any issues with your throat? And she said, I have just stopped my last treatment for throat cancer just this week. And I said, well, then your body's just trying to support you with that color. So mm-hmm. your body is drawn to what it needs so whenever you go into the crystal shop it's the same thing your body can be very much drawn you don't need to know what they're for mm-hmm. you can be drawn to the colors um i love rose quartz i just think it's such a beautiful stone it's all about self-worth means healing and and seeing yourself from that place of love which job done if we can all do that that's just amazing um but i always get intrigued about certain ones that maybe I need at certain times yeah Um, but it's funny I I haven't had a crystal healing session or anything like that but I'm really intrigued about them just the way I would be with a lot of other different modalities so even in terms of sage and coming in with my sage and Mm -hmm. using my or using my bells and my chimes I'm so into that because I'm so into the energy of a room and clearing it and making sure my space feels clear mm-hmm. and not cluttered that I really um, dive into because I pick up on energy so quickly you really do yeah um I, and just I would I would like if you're happy to share um you talked at the very start about the the dark year the black year the black year you had um I assume in your own family do you um it was Louise from Little Forget Me Nots was talking about, she's actually on the podcast today, it's now live, oh, and um, she talked about how her own journey through, it. well, it was grief for her, and I'm not, I'm not projecting on you, I don't know what it was, you're, you're dark here, and don't feel you have to share, but she talked about how she learned that through the therapy that she has, that you can still find happiness. Um, and, and obviously it makes her amazing, I believe, at what she does when you're in it mm-hmm. and when you feel it. And when you do you, you, you kind of implied that the, the dark time for you was a similar time when you went to the reflex all you perchance went that day when your mom was meant to go. Um, I do think everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. I personally mm-hmm. and I see that I like to connect the dots. Uh, do, you, do you have anything you want to share on that or how you are now in, in relation to who you were yeah. then or what you experienced? You know, it's funny because our black year in our house was a real collective. Um, We had 
uh, an, an illness happen with a member in the ex of our extended family who got sick and she died and she left a young daughter behind and, and a husband and it was that first time where we knew that things were beyond our control mm -hmm. and I think being at that time I think I was maybe 17 and all of a sudden the world didn't feel just so rosy it didn't mm -hmm. feel it felt that things could happen that that weren't um that we didn't know anything about and seeing my family process that on different levels um my sisters one went on to become a cancer nurse mm -hmm. um and then she worked in icu and now she's a health visitor um, one went on to become a teacher. My other sister, Carly, she's a photographer. And then I found my feet or I found my hands. And my mum, it was watching my mum process everything. Mm -hmm. Because then at that time, her mum then got very sick. So my nana got sick with cancer as well. And it became our dark year because communication in our family broke down. Mm -hmm. and especially in our household because we knew that mum wasn't okay but we didn't really know how to talk about it mm -hmm. and at the time she didn't really know how to talk about it but yet she couldn't pull herself away from digging in the garden so she was getting the green that lovely healing heart healing mm -hmm. um, without realizing she was getting it so for the first time we we're learning to really stand on our own two feet because that person that we relied on to make everything better, to wave mm -hmm. her magic wand, needed us. Mm -hmm. That was a massive transition. And only good came out of it. My mum then, she couldn't really communicate at that time. But then she developed her shop out of that, which was everybody um, coming in and painting and colour and she got her therapy that she needed and at that time people were drawn to the shop who were also struggling mm -hmm. and they would come in and offload and then we would be able to offload it was just lovely in that way and for me it was a transitional time because overnight I became too sensitive which okay. is something I used to be really embarrassed thinking people would think I was some sort of a witch mm -hmm. whereas normally I don't really care it was something that all of a sudden if somebody came too close to me and they were dealing with a headache or you a knew bug, I knew and I struggled with that because I absorbed it so much I couldn't absorb mm -hmm. but gradually I learned how to it was a long process so that was overwhelming and how to I remember sitting down and saying to somebody saying to a friend of mine somebody was sitting beside me that I didn't know and I said to my friend I feel like I've just broken my ribs and this person just turned on me and said how dare you say something so stupid you wouldn't begin to know what that felt like and I remember thinking but I but that's the only way I can describe it. I feel like I've literally broken something. So I started to understand that that was just another language of communication that I was feeling things. Yeah. Hey, well, you. that was, I would know. I don't think it's weird at all. I think it's amazing. That, was, that actually is my final question. I was going to say, you know, when you're so in tune with what you do and, uh, I'm I'm assuming there are joyful sessions whenever you're oh, with yeah. people on their feet, but I would I'm, I imagine seventy percent, maybe I don't know how many percent would be relatively heavy, informative, deep. No, is that fair? You know, I I would say probably. Oh, my cat is just coming over to say hello. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, this is this is Holly. Hi, Holly. Hi, Holly. So, um, I would say. It's peaks and troughs. Peaks and troughs. Well, you know, there's that, the carrying of that. How do you, do you ever just think I need to go and lie in yeah. a darkened room? Or am I, I don't mean to be frivolous about it, but are there times that you think that was so heavy? Yeah. How do you deal with that? Have you, is that just a professionalism that you've just managed to gain over time? Um, yes and no. And then it can, it can knock you for six out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I had that actually last week. And I came home from work and because my girls are really grounding, 
because whenever they're telling you about their, um, <laughs> my littlest one, Matilda, whenever she's talking to you about her bottom and mm -hmm. what she just did on the toilet, it grinds you very quickly. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't have time to mm -hmm. process or to think. So I can let go of things very quickly. And what's great about the end of the day at work, we're cleaning between clients, as, as everybody knows anyway. But at the end of the day, you're coming in with a hoover and a steam mop and you're cleaning everything and you're taking everything away and you're coming on with fresh stuff again the next day. So there's almost something symbolic in that. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, whenever I'm washing my hands, I'm, not, I'm always just trying to wash the energy between clients. Um, but there's some times where you just, at the end of the day, I can't shake it so much and I have to work on getting my energy grounded. Mm -hmm. And then last week I just came home from work and I just sat and cried. I cried yeah. for the whole evening. Um, my husband, uh, I think very quickly, put a drink in one hand and a bar of chocolate in the other. And, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh. and I couldn't even tell you what was going on. I just knew that I wasn't feeling so good. And it was mm -hmm. one of those days where I was just like, the world isn't so nice today mm -hmm. um, and that's okay because we're allowed to feel that we're living breathing human sponges mm -hmm. and we're allowed to feel overwhelmed that you know what some days things are just a bit heavy mm -hmm. and even in fact this particular week a lot of clients are coming and talking about the heavy the heaviness mm -hmm. and so I think I I have to be honest with you, I had to can't, uh, cancel clients on my Saturday. I tried to go in for Friday because I knew I could push through it. And then it got to the stage where I woke up on Saturday morning and I thought, I know that I cannot hide my my mood, my low mood. It had just reached a point where I know I need to step back and I need to put self-care in place. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's the beauty of, of what we do. Of Nobody's immune exactly exactly and you're real you're real and well thank you for being so open um and sharing it's so informative it's fascinating um, where where can people find you tell me this or what what's happening what at the minute people can find you and book appointments is that Yes, so the, the best thing would be um, my website is is always dead handy. So that's Um The next best thing would be Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm always on Instagram. Um, I used to be on Facebook, but not as much anymore. So Instagram. And it's Kirsty Elwood Mind Body as well, is it? Yeah, uh, Kirsty Elwood Body Mind, I think it is. Body Mind, okay. Yeah, Christy, I would body mine. But if you can even find my website, it will direct you every which way. Everywhere. Yeah. So that's good. That's Brilliant. And do you have one last thing you would like to say to people? Just anything you want. Yeah. Know your worth. Fair. Know your worth. It's okay to feel low. It's okay to feel good. Know your worth because we can all, we have as many magic wands as we want. But ultimately, the one who needs to, fly that flag is you mm -hmm. and that is a big leap in your own healing whenever you can recognize how wonderful or how beautiful how worthy you are yes it can be a work in progress hands down it's it is for me it's a work in progress mm -hmm. um but yeah know your worth big time because Brilliant. you will make leaps whenever you can see your worth Fab, thank you so much. It's been a beautiful morning for me as well. And thank you everybody for watching and for listening. And I will see you on the other side. Bye.